also starts from yesterday, but we said the system date minus one. So today, yeah, it will obviously take 23rd. So because these are not mandatory fields, I'm not trying to spend too much of time doing it. So now we committed it. I'm going back and I run the same job. You should see that one record. So I'm running the same job again without any changes. I mean, if it fails, it is going to fail only because of the format, but that's not a problem. We can fix it anytime we want. Now I ran the job. So it will always go into the else part because I made that one. But you see here, it is not pulling any records. The reason is only the date format. I need not worry, but it should pull that one record, whatever we have inserted here. If I committed it, um, let me see if it is committed or not. Okay, the other way I can check is from here, if I click on the small bubble symbol here, I can see if the new record is in here or not. There is 13th record, but why did not it get inserted? This one, dem1 is the 13th record. The only reason is the date format. If we want to fix the date format, it is going to get inserted. So how to fix the date format is in the initialization script, You'll have to do a two date and convert it into certain format. Only then it can be picked up. So I think I did that in a earlier session. So I wanted to leverage the same thing if at all it exists there. So here, this is the date format which I I tried to give in the same way. If I wanted to go there and then do it, it will also uh, run successfully. So do you want me to show or can I go with the rest of the transformations because it's already one hour and we have a lot to cover. So that's the purpose of the conditional there. Anyhow, we'll be passing these dates in any other transformation. So need not worry guys, I'll have to make this change again. So I'm going to do it now. And there is always a time factor associated to it, so we have to give it as a, a dd dot mm dot y y y. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I have given again repeatedly the same thing. That's it. Mi and ss. So if we give something like this, it is going to work. So that's fine. I'm not going to because I wanted to show you more transform case and so I'm not going to spend too much of time on this. You should be able to uh, I think fix these issues very easily because I know every one of you are smart enough to understand this and then uh, do it. So my, my the target for, for myself today is to explain you this merge transformation, uh, I don't know if I already mentioned it, but I'm going to show you merge SQL transform and I wanted to show also the uh, row generation transform. Yes, the row generation, uh, yeah, it is same as the, um, uh, the, what is it, uh, the time dimension, whatever we have used. So the other important i mean the date generation and the row generation is almost the same there we are generating a date whereas here we generate any data any record we want so i wanted to show the other important transform is a map operation so let us go and see those those three and the surrogate id i wanted to show you uh, the the key generation transform so let me show that four and while showing that four, I will also show you these conditionals and all where we wanted to use. And there is one more thing called as a while loop, which we can make use of if we wanted to loop the same thing to run more than one time. That is also one of the uh, uh, good functions or functionalities available here. But you know, this is all definitely based on your business case. You are going to do it, so you need not worry what whatever we are trying to do now. Uh, it, it is not going to be uh, fully compatible with the real-time scenarios. But if you follow the tutorial, you should be able to get the basic stuff. But whatever I am trying to do is an extra thing which uh, is very essential in any job. You are going to use this key generation. 
you're going to use the merge map operation and also the SQL transform row generation I don't think uh, we use that but I generally will show you so let us go with the remaining transforms for today I wanted to show something important SQL transform but I always say go with a very restricted use of SQL transform why I say that SQL transform is good if you wanted to extract data from source to stage you can use that but do not use the same SQL transform from your stage to target database because you are killing performance by doing it. Why I say that is when you make use of SQL transform, it is going to use the database resources, get the data and then process it in data services. But you will lose track of, I mean there is no scalability. You cannot scale what you try to filter. You don't know how many records have been read and how many records have been filtered. You don't have a proper log. log generated when you use the SQL transform and there are many other problems or reasons that we don't want to use the SQL transform because you are trying to build everything within the SQL uh, as a source and there is no there is no actual good reason to use the tool you can always write in the SQL uh, file and then generate everything but you know as I told you the changes are not scalable and uh, if you look at the production, you can, I mean, debugging a SQL is very tough than debugging a, a simple job on data services. So that is the reason I always say uh, use a minimal, um, I mean, minimal usage of the SQL transform is recommended. But I will try to show you how to use it. That is the important point I wanted to make. So I'm going to keep this uh, history uh, delta side. There is no issue. Let it be one side. And I'm going to introduce a new data flow here. And here you'll see the combination of data flows and workflows is possible. Definitely, uh, you can directly do a data flow or you can do it sequential, you can do it parallel with a workflow, everything is allowed. See, in a data flow, you can even do parallel loads. Today, we are going to also see that. So, in here, I'm putting this data flow as 001 underscore 03. Go ahead. All transforms oh, okay okay yeah not a problem I will do that so this one you don't want me to do it here instead you want me to introduce a new, new uh, because the, the 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 job whichever I did today it doesn't have anything except the conditional uh, but that's fine let this be here uh, there is no harm for me to be creating more jobs and it doesn't hurt anything on my end except that if you don't get confused I'm happy on that so if you want a new job yes I will start a new job here and say bad jobs because uh, and you know guys what I'm going to do right now whatever I'm doing is not the right way because I don't want to create more jobs like this instead to uh, to make sure that I follow whatever you want and also I follow the template requirements and all I'm going to replicate the job instead of creating a new job okay so do not get confused with why am I replicating just to make our life easier that we do need not keep uh, punching in all the new global variables and all so I'm trying to do it uh, in that way so we can say cast dim Yes, yes. Any global variable is at the job level. Only when you replicate the job and try to do a new job, it gets inherited or else it, it won't get to the new job. You'll have to again define all the global variables yours. So was there some question here? Someone, uh, I see the chat window popping up. Okay, just uh, so it's, uh, it's fine. Today I don't see Shauri in the class and he never told me that whether he's going to join or not. Shauri, by chance you there? I don't see him. So, in the in the next one, where what I am trying to show you, I will rename the job accordingly. So I will say customer dim SQL here. It is just only because you want it that way. In general. 
we name it at the data flow level so that you understand but here I'm trying to show you that you want it in a different job I do it so instead of this workflow I I, I mean if you remove a workflow for from here there is no harm there because they will be still in your object library only you are removing the workflow from this particular job so I'm also trying to show you that workflow underscore um, 0, 0, 0, 3. Sorry, zero zero three underscore zero one extract plus bit. So I'm going to rename the job anyhow because uh, it should get the proper name for it to work. Here zero three is the job name. So under that I'm going to give one more data flow directly. Uh, I'll be a little fast here. I don't need to be explaining uh, the naming conventions again and so I'm just going uh, without telling you anything else here. So trust dim underscore SQL here. So in this we are going to, I mean we're uh, earlier we saw even using a database as a source. Then why do we want to use SQL as a source? I will tell you why and in where which cases we wanted to use this. You can always uh, see data services is very flexible. This is one of the tools I saw that you can directly put a query transform, uh, I mean, directly extract any data without any mandatory transform in between. Whereas Informatica, you need to put the source qualifier to get data from source to target. But here you can do it directly. But this SQL transform is also one of the, uh, I say, I can say, the specialties of uh, data services, where you can write any SQL statement and it does what you want. And I will give you an example and show why we want to use this. So let me put some dummy target saying STG underscore. Um, custom underscore SQL. Yeah, I'm trying to give the same name again and again so that it makes sense for the example we have given. So in here you can write a SQL statement. That is the purpose. So you can pick a data store. Right now I wanted to do it from ODS and database type it automatically picked that this is MySQL 4.1. Join rank, ignore it, forget it for now. We will come to that later part and you say select star from ODS data. Uh, sorry, sorry, ODS dot. Mm, it was uh, ODS underscore customer. And when you do this and say update schema, it gets all the all the columns under it. And if you wanted to put any kind of restriction, where region um, ID is equal to ten, that is fine. That is a, a filter condition which you are putting. And generally the filter condition you wanted to make it global. So we'll say G underscore um, region underscore ID. I mean the why we give this is if you wanted to extract by region, this is how you'll have to give. But when you have the global variable in a SQL statement, you have to remember the syntax, you have to put a bracket. Only then it will be passed as a global variable. Whereas in data services, Inside a script, you don't need this. Whereas